We're going to go over just some very basic texture tricks in Photoshop so that you can get some textures that you're going to use for either the top bottom procedural in Max or that you composite or map onto your landscapes in some way. So this isn't anything tricky when it comes to um, you know how to make textures. We're just going to go over some very basic stuff here. And I'm going to jump over to my folder here where I've got a whole bunch of reference material. In my outbox, there's this landscape folder, and you'll find the sample rock textures in there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to open all of these in Photoshop. And I just picked a whole bunch of images here you can play with that are fairly generic. Again, I'm holding down that square bracket button to make my brush smaller. I'll be using that in a second. I'm also using my Wacom tablet again. A little bit more comfortable with that. So I'm just going to randomly select, uh, let's say, three of these. And what I'm looking for is just something that looks like it's going to blend together well. I want kind of a deserty feel to my... Um, texture. So those, those will work right there. I'm going to leave some of the rest of these open because I'm going to use those in a second. So I've got three textures here and all I'm going to do now is make a new texture that's nice and square. So I'm going to make one that's 512 by 512 pixels. Make sure it's not inches, 72 dots per inch. And I don't need it to be grayscale in this case. I want it to be RGB color and it can actually be 16-bit. And I'm going to say OK. And I'm just going to drag these images into my um, new map here. Start with the simplest texture first. Oh, and it needs to be at a different depth, so 16, 16 um, uh, color bet depth there, which uh, yours will probably be by default. Mine's different because I was playing with it earlier. I'm holding down Control and Alt to make a copy of this. So I just dragged a copy. You can see it made it into a different layer. I'm going to flatten it down. And I'm using the clone or the patch tool, not the clone tool, but the patch tool to just fill in the seam that's left behind. And to use the patch tool, you just go around an area and drag and let go and it will just seam everything together for you. Don't use the clone tool if you can get away with it because the clone tool tends to make um, areas that are really noticeable as being the same where the patch tool kind of takes care of that. So now I'm just patching out any obvious landmarks like rocks that stick out or big contrasty areas. See, like this big area right here is a little too whitish for me. I'll just grab all of that, move it over here, let go, and now it's it's all seamed together. So that's my bottom layer. I'm going to go ahead and close that. I'm going to do that same process with this image. I'm just going to drag it over. It will make a new layer over here. I'm going to clone this one. You could stretch it too. Here, I'll show you how to stretch it, just because I already showed you how to clone it. Go to Transform and Scale, and just scale it so that it goes off the edges a little bit, something like that. Hit Enter. And now I'm going to clone out again any noticeable areas in this. Don't worry about it being neat or areas matching up. So you can see the, the, the patch tool. Sorry, I keep calling it the clone tool. The patch tool will just get rid of any areas that are kind of noticeable. This little line down here, I don't like that much. Get rid of that, get rid of that. And there we go. We've kind of patched out those areas. All right. Oh, let's get rid of this little seam right up here. I'm just going to blend those together. So now, once I've got at least two images over here in my layer stack, just select the top one, knock your layers down to either dissolve or really any other um, layer type and hit the up and down button and what that will do is Photoshop will go through all the different layer types now and select one
that kind of blends everything together well. Like soft light here is a good one. Um, these are a little too harsh. Eh, a little too harsh. I think soft light or overlay look to be my best bet. So I'll go to soft light. So there's the image with the first layer. There's the image with the second layer in soft light. And I'm going to close this one. The last one, I'm going to do the same process. We'll just make a three-layer one here. In this case, I'll just um, go back to dragging. I'm holding down Control and Alt and just dragging this piece into a new layer. And then just merge down your layers so they're all in the same layer. And go back to your patch tool and patch out any areas that have... Um, obvious marks in them, like some of these little rocks with shadows aren't going to work really well because those shadows are going to look like they're 20 feet big when I get it into my map. So I'm just going to kind of clone out some of these rocks. I'll leave us a few of them. There we go. That's pretty good. And then again, I'll just drop my layer type down to dissolve or any other one for that matter. I'm hitting the up and down keys on the keyboard. And I'm looking for something that kind of blends everything together. That's not bad there. That's hard light. I think I'm going to go with, there was one up here at the beginning, probably multiply. Multiply looks good as well. I think I'm going to go with um, this uh, hard light. I'm going to go with that one. Okay, and if you're... If you're um, texture is too saturated, which happens as these different layers all blend together, you can go into each layer and just desaturate it by going to Image Adjustments, Hue Saturation, and just knock the saturation down and you'll see that it'll kind of slowly um, suck the saturation out of your, your texture. You can see there it's kind of going a little bit more towards um, brown, which is what I want. I want this to look more like a deserty type thing. And that's going to be pretty good. At this point, I'm going to flatten this. It's all one layer now. I need to make it tileable. And this is how you make it tileable. You go to Filter, Other, Offset. Type in half of however big your image was in each the vertical and the horizontal. So I had a 512 by 512 pixel image. That means 256 by 256 is half in each direction. Make sure preview is selected and make sure wrap around is selected or it won't work. Now there is a seam here. You can barely see it. It goes right through here and right through here. I'm just going to use my patch tool. I'm going to select that seam. Just move it up a little bit and let it blend together. I'm going to do the same thing here. You don't have to be neat. It's not going to matter. And I'm done. It's now a perfectly tileable image. You don't even have to move it back to where it was, but if you want to, you can just hit filter offset. It'll apply the same. Whoops. We'll go to other offset. How about that? And um, it'll apply the same settings that you had before. Okay? So, although that didn't, what did it do there? It filter offset. There we go. All right. So now it just offset it back to where I started. And now I'm going to save as. All right. I'm going to go to text 01. And I'm going to save mine as a target because I know those will work in Max. And I'll just hit save. And I want a 24-bit image. And this guy is all done. I'm going to leave this one open over here so that I can match the color. And I'm going to open up some of these others here that I had just dragged out randomly. And now I'm going to make another texture that's going to blend with this one. So I want it to be similar, but a little bit different. I don't like that one so much. That guy might be able to stay. This guy can stay. I don't like that one. I don't like that one. Okay, so I'm going to use these three images here for my next texture. So I do the same thing I did before. New 512 by 512 pixels, 72 um, dots per inch, pixels per inch. 
and I'm just going to drag this texture in. There we go. I'm going to change the mode on this back to 8 bits. For some reason, I put the default earlier on a different setting. All right. You can see here this is a lot lighter over on this side. This is a good way to use clone. I'm holding down Alt, clicking in a clean part of the image, and I'm just going to clone over the darker area. We don't want those darker areas um, in our texture because they're going to screw everything up. Now I can just hold down Control and Alt, drag this piece down. There we go. I'm going to merge, flatten everything together because this will be my base layer. And now I'm just going to grab my patch tool and just patch out some of these more obvious areas that are obviously tiling and won't look right. Okay, same thing I did before. I'm going to drag in a new image here. This time I'll just scale it out. So I'm going to go to scale. We'll just drag this one out here. That's good. Hit enter. I'm going to go through my layers. Just click on a layer. Hit the up and down button until you find something you want. I think that will work for me in this case. I'm going to delete that. I'm also going to delete this one. I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to drag this one over. Holding down Control and Alt, I'm just going to drag out a few layers here. You can see there's three there because I wanted to cover up some other areas. And I'm going to hit Merge Down. So I just have three layers of different rock. Nothing special. And this time I'm going to go to my Layer Types and hit the Up and Down button again. I kind of like that one there. And now this one's going to be too dark. But I can see that everything else is kind of working in this. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten it. And I'm just going to go to Image Adjustments, Hues, or Brightness Contrast in this case. And I'm going to brighten it up. And I'm just going to bump the contrast up a little bit. And you can see that I can kind of bring out the detail. Now I'm going to go to Image Adjustments, Hue Saturation. And I'm going to desaturate a little bit. And I also want it to be a little bit lighter. So there we go. And I think actually the contrast still needs to go up in this a little bit. Maybe in the end that's a little bit better. Okay. So now I have two textures here. I'll get rid of this one. I have two textures here. These two textures are going to blend together in my scene. Oh, you know what I forgot to do is I forgot to tile this one. I need to filter other offset. You can see there's a seam running right across the middle. I'll go to my patch tool, grab this seam, and we'll just clone them out, or patch them out. I always say clone. I'm used to saying clone. I'm just going to get rid of some of these dark areas there so they match up a little bit better. All right. And I'll leave this. I know that it tiles now. I don't need to put it back to where it was. I need to save this one, and we'll save this as Texture 2. There we go, and we'll save it. 24 dot or 24 bits images. Okay, that's how we make textures to get them over into Max. And next, we're going to apply these in a top-bottom uh, shader type for our mouth.